Today's lesson is 7.2 in your textbook, page uh, 403, uh, Foundations of Precalculus and Mathematics 10 by Pearson. And uh, we talked about in 7.1 what are systems of linear equations. And of course, those are, that's two lines or two linear uh, equations that would represent parts of a problem. So a system is two or more, uh, you know, equations representing uh, a word problem or a situation of some sort. So in 7.1, we identified systems, and we verified solutions for systems. Today is the first day that we're going to solve systems, okay? So you've got this as your title, Solving Systems of Linear Equations. And how we're going to do that is by graphing, okay? Now, um, we talked a little bit about this when we introduced Chapter 7, but if we have a system of linear equations, we have two lines, and the x and the y values are the same in both equations. That means that there is a point in common, right? The point x, y is common to both lines at the same time. So when we have two lines with one point in common, that means that that point is on both lines, therefore it is called the blank point, what we talked about yesterday. Uh, it's the it's the intersection of those two lines. Yes, it's where they intercept each other. I hesitate to use the, the term intercept because that usually means a point on one of the axes. So it, it doesn't necessarily like it doesn't necessarily exactly cross at an axis, but it certainly would uh, uh, you know it would cross the lines would cross at a point somewhere, and this would be the solution that we're after. Okay, so graphically what a solution to a system of linear equations looks like is it looks like the intersection point of the two lines. All right? So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to graph the lines that are you know, in the problem here, and then we're going to notice where the intersection point is, and that's going to be our solution. It's as simple as that. So this is solving by graphing. So let's just write that down as a bit of a note here. So the solution to a system of linear equations is the intersection point when the lines are graphed on a coordinate plane. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to solve by graphing. As we move through this chapter, we're going to solve by different methods. Today's method is graphing. Okay? And I'm going to show you how to, uh, well, I mean, you should know how to do basic graphing of lines already. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to use the graphing calculator for lines that are a little bit tricky to uh, find the intersection point. And your graphing calculator is going to do it really easily. Okay? So, manually, okay, so graphing manually, what we need to do is graph each line. One of the easiest things to do is to graph the intercepts. Right? So if I'm going to focus on x plus y equals 8, let's find out what the x-intercept is, and that's where y equals 0, right? And so if we let y equals 0, then x plus 0 equals 8. So x equals 8. So um, let's go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay? So 8, 0 for this blue line. And so the y-intercept is where x equals 0. And we have y equals 8. So, 2, 4, 6, 8. And at the very top of our graph. Okay, so that's going to be the other intercept. Now, the line would be the connection of those two points, right? So, let's see if I can sign that up. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, so x plus y equals 8. Now, let's check some other points on this graph which should be like, for example, 2 and 6. Does 2, 2 plus 6, does that give us 8? Yes. Does 4 plus 4 give us 8? Yes. Does 6 plus 2 give us 8? Yes. Does 8 plus 0? Yes. Does 10 plus negative 2 give us 8? Yeah. So you see how all the points in this line satisfy that equation. All of them do. So that's why we draw that line. Okay? You good with that? All right, so this is using intercepts. Um, what we could do, well, actually, intercepts are uh, going to be the easiest to, way to go most times. So let's do the other one in 
uh, no, not red, green. The other one in green. And so the x-intercept here is going to be where um, y is 0. And so this is going to be 3x equals uh, 14, which is going to be 14 over 3. All right. So 14 over 3, eh, it's a fraction. If you want to convert that to a decimal, is that easier to place on your graph? Probably. Okay. So 4 and 2 thirds. Um, okay, so does that look, everything looks right there, right? Just want to double check. X intercept, so four and two thirds, okay. So as best you can, you want to put place that on your graph. And let's find the Y intercept here now. So that's X equals zero. And that's going to be negative two Y equals 14 or Y equals negative seven divide both sides by negative 2. So, y equals negative 7. Let's see where that is. 4, 6, 8. So that's going to be right there. Uh, are you guys in agreement there so far? Looks good. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, yes. 4 and 2 thirds. This is actually, five, that's 5 right there, so let's back that off. Yeah, thanks. Um, Good catch, good catch. Those are oh, good. Oh, can't do it. Can't grab that little dot. Okay, we're gonna leave the little dot. So four and two thirds is going to be this is this is five right here. So four and two thirds is gonna be over here. Thank you. Yes. So let's draw a line there. And start here. Okay. Whoa. A circle? Really? Okay. Hi. All right, let's undo that. That's not what I want. Apparently I hit the wrong thing there. Okay, let's try this again. Got to line this up. All right, ish. Okay. So there we go, going through both of those points there, and we're going to ignore, ignore that one. All right, so... If we use those intercepts and we graph the lines, what you should see is there should be, and if you do this as accurate as possible, there should be an intersection point that's fairly noticeable. It might be a decimal, but you might be able to quickly see that this point, right, is the point 6, 2. Okay? And for a more detailed graph, I'm just going to refer back to the textbook here. see that is example one and example one is right here here we go this is uh, these are the lines right here so two three four and two thirds negative seven okay, eight and eight and so there you go six two is your intersection point yep uh, should you label your lines on the graph so what what do you mean like the x and y or the, the numbers yep Oh, you're talking about this right here. Um, you don't. You don't have to. No, you don't have to. Um, it, if if there's any chance that you might mix these up, it doesn't really matter because you're just looking for the intersection point anyway. So, so no, that you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You're just interested in the intersection point. As long as you show kind of where each line came from, right? That's the that's the important thing. Okay. So your intersection point is six two. So yeah, to get full credit for a question like this when you're doing your homework or on an exam or something, I would need to see how you got your, how you plotted your line and a fairly accurate graph and then the intersection point. And then, you know, you'd have to state somewhere, your answer being circled here too, that uh, what your answer is. So the uh, solution is the point six two. For your own self, I probably won't require it, but for your own self, you might want to double check to make sure that 6 and 2 works for both equations uh, algebraically, just to make sure that your graph was correct. So 6 plus 2 is 8, that's good. 3 times 6 is 18, minus 2 times 2 is 4, so this one is good too, 18 minus 4. Right? 
So um, a mental check or just some kind of quick check like that would be good. All right, any questions there? Any other questions? All right, I'm going to show you how to use the graphing calculator right now. So I want you all to grab a graphing calculator. So technically in your textbook, 7.3 is the math lab that teaches you how to use graphing technology. I don't think it does a real good job of doing that. So, um, yeah, it doesn't actually do a good job. It actually shows you only how to plot uh, points and then you have to still manually graph them. I'm going to make this much easier. I'm going to show you how to use the graphing calculator to actually graph both lines for you. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to get the calculator to find the intersection point for you. All right. So why don't we do the example we just did. All right. So um, let's use this exact same one. And I'm going to show you how this works on the graphing calculator. Okay. So uh, x plus y equals 8. And what was it? 3x minus 2y equals 14. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 14. Okay. So we're going to get the graphing calculator to do this for us. So the first thing that you'll notice, and you get your graphing calculator out, and you turn it on, clear a screen here, you see this button up here, y equals that's the button that you push to access this screen right here. It has plot one, two, three at the top, which we're not going to be using those. That's for plotting statistical data. We're not going to be doing that. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be programming in lines or functions into these, uh, these lines here. So um, I've got some already in there. You see how I've got two functions? I've got a straight line and I've got a parabola. And so these, this is what I have programmed in already. This is the straight line, right? X plus 1. And this is the quadratic function, is what it's called. And the shape is called a parabola. So X squared plus 3. I'm going to get you to clear off everything that's on here. Okay? So you have a blank screen like this. Now, your calculator will only allow you to input functions that are in, basically in uh, slope intercept form. So what you have to do, notice that you have Y equals you have to manually, it's the only kind of manual thing we're going to be doing here, but you have to isolate for y, so you have to rearrange these equations so that y is all by itself and positive before you enter into the calculator. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, that's no problem. This is going to be y equals negative x plus 8, or 8 minus x. This one down here is going to take a couple steps, um, but negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 14, and divide by negative 2, so we get 3 over 2x um, minus 7. Okay, does that look right? So these are the new uh, versions of these lines. Same lines, right, just different form. So it's a good thing we learned how to change forms before, right? Because this is now going to help us in our technology. So, sorry, we'll get that calculator up. And this is what you're going to do. The first one is negative x plus 8. I think I mentioned to you guys before that this is a minus right here, and this is a negative sign in your calculator. Do not mix them up, because your calculator will say error. It doesn't understand that they're... I mean, they, we write them the same, but you're, you have to tell the calculator that it's different. So if you have a negative x, a negative in front, it has to be this button negative. The x button is this button up here x comma t comma theta comma n. So you press that and you will show up an x. If you have other variables in your problems, you can't change the variable, it's always going to be x in your calculator. And then plus 8. Okay. Now hit graph, the button right here, graph, and you should see this screen, and it should look like this. If it doesn't, if your screen is uh, zoomed in or if it's altered, you hit zoom and then you see standard, zoom 6. That will give you this standard window, and then everybody should have this on their calculator. Okay? How are we doing? Everybody have that so far? If you don't, go back to your y equals screen, and make sure that you have negative x plus 8, or 8 minus x will be the same thing. Alright, so next thing we're going to go to the next line, and we're going to graph another line simultaneously, right? We want two graphs on the same coordinate. So, 
sure what happened to my notes here. Computer problems these days. All right, so on the calculator with your fractions, uh, you got to go like this. Bracket, 3 divided by 2, bracket, x. Or you can do bracket 3x divided by 2. That's the same thing. But good idea to put your fractions in brackets. And then minus, this is where we use the minus sign, 7. And we graph. And we should have, uh, you should have this on your screen. <clears throat> now this should look very much the same as the one we just did right there. Okay, the axes are maybe a little bit squished up uh, or stretched out or whatever, but you see how we basically have the same thing there? Okay, that line, that line. Everybody got this? All right, so now this is the cool part. Okay, um, this is gonna this is gonna take some focus and some attention, so everyone needs to be watching here. But you're gonna get the calculator to find out where this intersection point is for you, and this is how you do it. You ready? Everyone, everyone watching now? You see this little calculate function right up here above the trace? Do second function trace to access the calculate screen. Now, of these options, which one do you think we might want to use? Calculate what? intersect that's right so you either scroll down to number five or you can just press number five and this should show up on your screen something like this now you have the cursor blinking here and it should be on one of the lines and the, the line that it's on should be listed up in the top corner the calculator is going to ask you is this the first curve it doesn't know it's a line because this works for parabolas and other things too it's, gonna, it's saying, is this the first one you want me to consider? We only have two, so you just say yes. How you say yes is you press the enter button. Then the calculator will say, okay, that's the first one. Now it's going to jump to the next one. It's going to show you the equation up there, and the cursor will be blinking, and it should be on the next line or somewhere. It'll say, is this the second curve? See that? You hit enter again. So now the calculator knows that you want to find the intersection point between this line and this line. And then it says, guess, question mark. So you want it to guess what the intersection is. And when it says guess, it's not like a random guess. It's going to calculate it. So, But you hit enter again. And so the calculator will pause for a minute. And you should have a blinking cursor at the intersection point. And look down here, x, 6, y, 2. That's your solution. So it does all the work for you and you just go straight to your answer. So, when you're doing this, okay, obviously you have to manipulate your equations. I need to see that. And, again, to receive full marks, you need to at least sketch out what you see on your calculator screen, okay? So, we need to at least sketch out pretty detailed, not exact, but pretty, you know, pretty decent, and I need to see that this is the intersection point um, 6, 2, all right, and uh, you, can, you can just kind of quickly pop that if you want, and, you know, just kind of make it nice and neat, show me that you've actually done this, and then you say 6, 2 is the solution, so you can make sure you circle that or highlight that this is your solution, the point, 6, 2, or you can say x equals 6, y equals 2, that works as well, all right? Now, obviously, this is going to work for any system of linear equations. Um, so if you have a word problem, you might have to come up with the equations first, like we did in 7.1. But then once you do that, you can plug them in your calculator, and this will help you go faster. You will need to know how to graph manually, and you'll need to show me that. So you will need to know how to do this. But for um, many of your problems, you will be able to use the graphing calculator. All right? So... That's that. That's the lesson there. We're going to do a couple more examples here so you can get some practice. But if you need to review anything, you can go back and watch this video over and over again and uh, see how we did that with the calculator.